Well, hey everybody, Wes McDonald here, and I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of Tiger Tube. And if you're not watching, if you're listening, that means you're listening in on Tiger Paw Radio, so thank you very much. Listen, while you're here, do not forget to subscribe. We have a ton of educational content to help you better your business so you can sleep better at night. And speaking of one of those things that help us all sleep better at night, it is sales. And I do want to share with the world, um, we'll speak about this a little bit later, but I did get my books. And uh, Sell Yourself is one that we spoke about uh, already. And Every Job is a Sales Job is another fantastic read, especially for the kind of folks that we're trying to help uh, today. So before I go any further, maybe you can tell me, because I love this term, you are the first lady of sales. How did how did your journey begin You know, to get there? Um, honestly, kicking and screaming. <laughs> I never <laughs> wanted to be in sales. So it's very funny. I can, I can really resonate with a lot of your audience, I think, because I felt that way. I thought sales was pushy, manipulative. You had to be like fast talking and slick. And long story short, I was a college professor, went into consulting and got put into a sales role. And truthfully thought I was going to get fired because I was like, I can't do that job. Like, I'm not, I'm not that person. About six months into it though, I realized I had actually been selling really my whole career and my whole life. I just didn't call it sales. I called it helping people. I called it problem solving. And then when I realized that I went, why was I never taught this before? And so that really pivoted my whole career to now help people to kind of embrace their inner salesperson too. Yeah, it's funny. I'm an accidental you know, salesperson as well, right? And my first sales job, I was actually working as a maitre d' um, at a restaurant when I was in college. When I was working at this restaurant, uh, they sold specials like most restaurants do, right? Where the special of the evening is, you know, whatever. And uh, the owner um, you know, taught me the nuances of actually being able to describe the foods and to tell people what, what the, why they want to try them. And I got a bonus every time that I sold a special. So I very quickly uh, started uh, selling out of specials every time that they, they had them in the restaurant, right? I learned that because again, it was helping people. It wasn't trying to tell them a fib story or, or trying to take them down the garden path. It was like, you know what, we don't do this very often. Here's what it looks like. Here's what it tastes like, you know, and I just love that, right? When you discover that, hey, you know what? This idea of selling is is not what I thought it was, right? You know, what's funny about that is I, I can certainly relate to that as well because I was a bartender and we used to have specials on like, this is going way back, but sports bottles, remember those? Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm really dating myself now, but it was the same thing. Like whoever sold the most sport bottles in a night got like 20 bucks or something. And, you know, it was that, that was gold, but it was something that, I felt like I was offering versus pushing and yes. that's the biggest difference or you're inviting them to try the special versus forcing something on them. And I think that's really a lot of people that are in any service capacity of a job. That is what we do. That's why we like what we do is because we do want to help people. We want to offer them a solution. Um, so maybe you can walk me through a little bit uh, about how you define personal brand and why for uh, IT services providers and office equipment dealers in this modern, in this modern been, why is it so important in the sales process? So I think your personal brand is one of the most important things, not just in your sales career, but in your job, in your life, because it's the legacy that you're leaving behind. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. It's how people refer to you. And yes, your company has a brand and that is also important, but you're absolutely right. People buy from people. And so my trust actually begins with you, not with your company, most likely. It begins with you being my go-to person. I'll give you an example. One of our IT folks, we call him guru because he's the guy that can just magically like wave his wand and fix things, you know, but we go with him, not necessarily where he worked at the time. So what we bought into was his personal brand. We bought into the trust that he had our best interest at heart. He could fix it or he could find the problem or he could find a solution or he'd be honest with us that he couldn't as well. And so looking at those things, that's your personal brand. That's what you're bringing to the table. And that's actually what you're selling before you sell services, copiers, anything else. I love it because, you know, you know your personal brand goes with you no matter where you work as well, right? That it is really a long-term a representation of yourself with the people that you sell to. Um, and I guess I've just always believed that inherently, right? That if you do the right thing for people, uh, they might ask you in the future to do the, to the right thing again, right? So 
who doesn't like a little, you know, repeat business based on, you know, on that. And, and I do know that, you know, some folks out there would, you know, kind of look at uh, personal brand as a bit fluffy, right? Saying, no, no, we, all we have to do is focus on our offering. If our offering is good enough, then we're going to, you know, take over the world, right? So uh, for some of these, and, and as I discussed before the interview, that we have some companies that started out as lifestyle businesses, if you will, and grew into large organizations, uh, whereas other organizations started as sales organizations. And I think they get some of that concept. But for some of our um, you know, viewers that are looking to grow faster, uh, to looking to go from that lifestyle business or a smaller uh, managed smaller. service provider, um, what kind of tips can you give them on, you know, personal brand and how important it is for them? So the first thing I would say is going back to the original thing you said, which is you have a brand, whether you realize it or not. <laughs> so those that don't think they need one or don't think it's important and they think it's just the product or the offering you just got lucky because <laughs> your, <laughs> your brand exists and you're the only one that doesn't know it. So that's the first thing. And I would say, if you're really looking to scale, it's looking at how you leverage the trust that you've built with your fans, because those are your walking minions. Those are your walking commercials. And what they're actually selling isn't just your product, your service, whatever you're providing, they're selling their relationship with you. They're selling people on the fact that you're a good guy, you're a good girl, like that you can be trusted. And then that's what's going to get you the introduction to talk to that next potential client where you can sell your product or service. So I would encourage everybody that's looking to scale, whether you're beginning as a solopreneur, you're an entrepreneur, you got a business, you're trying to triple it. It is about your people leveraging their personal brands to sell themselves to leverage their network. And if we're missing the boat on that, honestly, you're leaving business on the table. Yeah, I can't think of felt but culture in that regard too, right? And it was actually an interview that I just did a couple of days ago uh, with an organization that really pushes, you know, the importance of culture as well. And, and I think you would really respect personal brand if in one of your cultural points um, that you actually stated that it was about people, right? Because once you do that, once you frame the vision on the people that work for you and for your customers, how can you not help but to encourage kind of that brand to develop, right? Yeah. And I mean, the values should align, right? Like you don't want to go to work at a company that is completely opposite of your own core values. And I'll share with you one of ours. So at my company, one of our core values is we take fun seriously <laughs> and we mean it. <laughs> so we're a completely remote company. We have been for almost 15 years. And you have to connect with humans in 2D every day. You're not seeing your coworkers. So it needs to be fun. And you have to, you know, have a level of sense of humor and you have to have, you know, at least 20% snark. And <laughs> these are the things that we, we value here at my company. But if you have that built in, it is, you're going to attract those folks that have that similar value. And then it their brand is going to almost automatically in a lot of ways help promote your brand because it's so well aligned. Yeah. And I think as well that what you're saying is really important for people to understand. Like when you say that it's one of your core tenants to take fun seriously, that sales can be fun, that we, we probably got into being entrepreneurs in the first place um, because it was fun, right? We found a passion for something and connected to it. And then we're able to bring that, you know, uh, to the world. And, and I think we lose that sometimes along the way where people think, okay, I've had my fun now. Now it's time to just be serious and and get on with it. And they lose that kind of, you know, uh, that that personal brand and that trust factor. And that's one thing I really got from, you know, looking at Sell Yourself was this idea of that when you do that, you can build trust with the customer, right? Because you're not selling something that is fake. You're not selling something that is a quote unquote persona. And I wonder, is that a mistake people make is that they think that personal brand is about creating a fake persona versus selling the ver like the the authentic you yeah i actually think that's a huge mistake that a lot of people make and what also happens is you end up with what i call a split personality brand and i talk about this in the book where people don't know where to file you in huh. their mind and so it's like well okay, you're, you're, you know, a, an MSP over here, but you also have a side hustle as a personal trainer. So which one do you want to be when you grow up? And I don't know how to support you. So it's like, right. if I don't know where to file you in my brain, I can't advocate for you. And people kind of miss the boat on that a lot of times. And, and part of that is also, maybe you're not clear on your brand yet. Maybe you haven't decided. I was doing an interview with someone that would come on board with us the other day. And this person had 
basically four different things they were doing at the same time. And I literally asked in the job interview, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And <laughs> she laughed. And I said, no, I'm serious because this job is kind of one lane. Like you right. will be doing this role. Is that of interest? And then of course she starts trying to sell me on it, but I don't know where to put her. So I, you know, it's probably not a fit. <laughs> so her personal brand clearly was not clear, right? And it's very split, split personality. I love that example. And and I'm wondering, maybe you could just share some tips on how they can develop a personal brand. What are you know some foundational things that they can think about as they're trying to do that? The first thing is it does start with your core values. It needs to be you. It needs to be authentic because like you said, it's not that persona. It needs to be who you really are or else you're not going to be able to keep it up at the end of the day. Like you're going to get exhausted. So that's the first thing. The second thing is it needs to be really what you want people to think about you. So I would encourage people to sit down and think about what are the words you would like for people to use when they talk about you, when they describe you. And do this exercise just like you do a sales plan, just like you make a grocery list. You create a plan for your vacation. Think about it like this, y'all. Like we plan for our vacations more than we plan for our own legacy. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's, but it's true. It is. So if you really took a few minutes and thought about the legacy you're leaving and the words you want people to use to describe you, that's one of the first steps. Then you start thinking about how you're going to get that message out there. And if there are words they're not using that you want them to, that's where you have to sell them on it. You have to sell them on, oh, no, I do this. Yes, I'm an IT person, but I also do this. Oh, we do copiers, but we also do this. We file people in the file. Make sure you're filed correctly. <laughs> yeah. And I love it. And without personal brand, you can't do that, right? And I do want to take some time and respect for your time and obviously of that of our listeners and viewers to talk a little bit about your books as well, right? So every job is a sales job. Um, your first book, what inspired you to, you know, to write that? Writing books <laughs> is not easy. It, it is not. It is not, um, especially when you're still hustling your full-time job, you know. Uh, but I I wrote Every Job is a Sales Job because it's literally the book I wish somebody had given me when I was 18. I have a PhD in communication. I went to phenomenal colleges and I wasn't taught that. And it's because I wasn't taught sales. Sales is a life skill, not a business skill. And I went, how did I miss this lesson? And so, you know, finding your life's mission, I was like, I got to help people realize that they need this skill set. And so that's literally what write, brought me to write the first book. I love it. And, uh, you know, for all of us out there, and I think, uh, like, like I said earlier, a lot of our audience are accidental salespeople, right? And that to have a book to help you actually how to define that and uh, not to make some of the mistakes, I, I'm like you. I wish I had your book when I was 18. <laughs> That would have been different, right? <laughs> but of course, you don't just have one book. You've got two. And so you've got to follow up, uh, sell yourself, and maybe talk about what the expansion of that is uh, over kind of looking at life as every job, you know, being a sales job. So once we realize that that sales is truly a life skill and we're selling regardless of what we're doing, what I wanted people to realize is the first thing they are selling is themselves. You're selling yourself in a job interview, like you said. You're selling yourself to your colleagues, to your kids' school. Like All of the things you do are interacting with other humans, even if it's in 2D, even if it's virtual. Every email you send is actually a sales transaction, but we don't think about it like that, but you're selling your own brand. So when I realized like people didn't really think about that and they thought personal brands were something that celebrities need or yeah. people in the limelight. And I, I went, whoa, hold on a second. Like everybody's got one of these. I need to help people. And so it's funny. That's why I named it Sell Yourself when I was working with a publisher, because it's a phrase everybody knows. We say it all the time. We say, oh, go sell yourself. And then we also talk about as leaders, we'll get buy-in from your team. You got to get buy-in. What do you think that is? <laughs> Those are sales conversations. We forget the operative word is sell yourself. We forget that it's buy in, which means you're selling something. And what you're really selling at the very beginning is you. Yeah. And, and I love the fact that, you know, you've actually given people instructional basis on what those, you know, people think are common sense statements. Right. And if somebody told me to go make a souffle, um, and I'd be like, I love souffles. And then once I get in front of the stove, I'm like, okay, what do I do? I don't even know where to start, right? <laughs> and that this recipe book is so important. And I think that's great about what you've uh, done in the books. 
Um, I know that you also uh, work with Orange Leaf Academy, right? And that you do have uh, training for people and stuff that you can do there. And I'll make sure that I put a link for that as well as some uh, video for people to actually be able to see it on the on the page. And um, you can go to the Academy quite simply by clicking on the link uh, that you'll see in the video. And what inspired the Academy? So because of our 2D world and virtual world and hybrid world, we wanted to be able to bring our skills development to more people across the globe, quite frankly. And we, you know, I have Orange Leaf Consulting, the consulting service, but that's not a fit for everyone. Some people have a team of 10 and it doesn't make financial sense to hire a consulting firm. So we took our core tenants and we started to put them into courses online and some are completely evergreen, which means they're 100% online. Some have a hybrid component where there's coaching involved. Um, you can always, you know, upgrade to individual coaching as well. But it's really that sort of inner helpaholic in me that just wanted to be able to reach a larger audience to help them with their sales skills and be able to grow their business and have more fun in the process. Yeah, I love it. And when we talk about this work from anywhere, right, and you've mentioned that your team is completely virtual. I work with an office equipment dealer uh, who's had the same structure and people said it couldn't be done, right? You have your service techs, you have these people. And uh, from the inception, uh, has a tremendous national business, and they all work remotely, and more people are. And the other thing I, I see changing all the time, especially in the technology world, is that we're moving away from managing things uh, to managing services, right? So that our customers were used to us taking care of their server, their desktop, their copy, or their printer. But as more things migrate to the cloud, we're going to be asking them to trust us uh, to manage services for them that we've never done before. And it just really resonates with, with me how important, especially in a, in a, in a quick changing uh, technological environment, how important that personal brand is because they need to know that as the times change and as what you're saying you can do for them changes that they can trust you, they can trust the brand. I got to tell you, so I'm I'm basically the core audience that the the target audience for your folks here today. So I can speak to that, and I will tell you, Guru, our our guy that that we've worked with for a very long time, we had an issue right when we were launching the academy, and it was way above my pay grade. I do not touch technology here. That is the sharp knife drawer. I'm not allowed to touch it. <laughs> and uh, one of our team members kind of manages and works with Guru, and it was very funny because he won me over well before that, but that day when we were really trying to push this out. And I literally was about to pull the plug. I said, do we need to pull the plug and not launch on Monday? And he goes, no, we are launching on Monday. And this was a Friday evening, Friday evening. And he made it happen. He And I said, I got to go. I had to go to an event. And he's like, go, I've got this. Oh, so it wow. was even just managing my own anxiety is part of the service that we're providing. So recognizing that is that part of your personal brand as well, how you manage not only the service, but the person. You're managing the anxiety of the folks around you. Because remember, most of us don't know what it is you guys are doing. <laughs> it's true. I love it. And because of their brand, because of how you trust that brand, you literally did trust them and it got done. Wow. It did. And I touched nothing. Literally, I went to the event, was getting updates on my phone, touched nothing. It was phenomenal. Oh, I love it. And uh, listen, we're at the end of the uh, program today. And I always do ask one uh, question, I call it uh, the impossible question, but if there was only one thing that someone could do to get started building their personal brand uh, in this space, what, what do you think that might be? The first thing is take an inventory of what your brand is already. Pay attention to how people are talking about you, how people are referring you, what are the words that they're using, and make sure they align with how you want to be known, because those blind spots are actually your growth preventers. Those are the stallers if you're not careful. So that's the first thing is pay attention to what narrative is out there already about you, about your organization, and make sure you start to control that narrative differently. Well, I love it. I know one of the first things I'm going to do after this call is write down my own inventory list. So uh, Dr. Cindy, I cannot thank you enough. And for everyone out there that's uh, watching or listening in, or listening uh, very in. simple. Uh -huh. uh, you can go to drcindy.com and that's Cindy. Uh, C I N D Y dot com. So, Dr. Cindy, thank you so much again. And for everyone out there, thanks for tuning in. Do not forget to subscribe, tune into more educational content at tigerpod.com slash resources. And as always, until next time, keep learning. <laughs>